Hello guys and welcome back to our YouTube channel. I'm Camille from Pareto Education and today we'll be talking about shortness of breath and then we'll proceed to an example shortness of breath history. Shortness of breath is another very very common presentation in general practice in secondary care and it's something you're bound to encounter. So it's very important to take a comprehensive shortness of breath history to understand because there's a lot of pathologies that can cause a symptom of shortness of breath ranging from infection, cancer, and also long-term conditions such as COPD. When taking a shortness of breath history, it's very important to consider the associated symptoms. When patients are presenting with shortness of breath, ask about a cough. Ask about how they have sputum with their cough. What color is the sputum? This will give you a lot of information. It's very important to ask about chest pain. Chest pain is often associated with shortness of breath, and this can allude to certain diagnoses. So if a patient is short of breath and they have chest pain, it's something that you want to consider and look at further. Shortness of breath can also present with wheeze. This is an audible sound that can be heard not only to the passer by, but definitely on auscultation. So something that you should consider when taking a shortness of breath history. Weight loss, another red flags, you know, if patient feeling lethargic based on their history, that's something you should consider. And hemoptysis, leg swelling, these are also considerations when taking a shortness of breath history. The risk factors for shortness of breath, the top, top risk factor is smoking. And it'd be negligent to not ask about smoking history. In this also include occupation. Certain occupations are exposed to occupational hazards, asbestos, etc. that you should be aware of. Ask about recent travel and surgery. This is also a red flag for respiratory conditions such as PE. And finally, don't forget that all important safety net. Shortness of breath patients, like all patients, should be presented with a safety net so they are aware and understand what to do in emergency situations. You can present the patient and tell them their diagnosis and then tell them, based on their diagnosis, what they should do. For example, a patient with a chest infection, we would safety net. If your shortness of breath continues to deteriorate, if your temperature is not well controlled and your symptoms deteriorate further, if you're not able to catch your breath, despite this antibiotic treatment that we're giving you, please get, seek further help based on the severity. If very severe, you may need to ring 999. So that's the explanation about shortness of breath. Let's see the example. Hello, my name is Camille and I'm one of the clinicians here at the practice. Can you start by taking your name and day of birth, please? My name is John Matthews and I was born on the 1st of April. 1962. Is it okay if I call you John? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, John. Nice to meet you. I've been asked today to take a history from yourself. Basically means asking about what's brought you in and see how we can help. Is that okay? Yeah, that's all right. Okay, so tell me, John, how can we help you today? I'm really struggling with my breathing. Okay. Um, this has been going on for probably a year or if not more. Mm. And I've been trying to manage it myself, but I just can't get on top of it. Okay. And when you say you're having problems with your breathing, what as such, what do you mean by that? I find that I'm not breathing right. Okay. Probably not making much sense, but you know, whether I'm doing something or even now, even at rest, for example, I feel like I'm coughing a lot, just struggling to, to get air in and I've become really worried. Do you feel short of breath? That's definitely the best way to describe it. Some people describe it as out of puff or anything like that. Yeah, probably that. Yeah. Okay. And it's been going on for a year or so, would you say? It has been. And over that time, has it been about the same or has it been getting worse progressively? It's been getting worse. You okay. know, there are periods where it gets really bad. You might have seen on my record that I've had lots of chest infections recently. Mm. That's not me. And I don't know why that's happening. But there are periods where I start to wheeze. Mm. I start to gasp for air and it mm. just gets worse. I'm really worried. And tell me about before a year, did you have any problems with your breathing before last year or anything like that? Have you always been that, you know? Well, I think my breathing's been all right. I get to do what I need to do normally, but recently I've just been struggling. Okay. And you say even it happens at rest, but is it worse when you're sort of exerting yourself, when you're going for a walk, for example, to the shops, anything like that? It's definitely worse when I'm doing something like that. Okay. Does anything make it worse in particular, such as you know, what time of day it is, if you're out somewhere, you know, this kind of thing, dust, that kind of thing. Not particularly dust, okay. but I do find it worse in the daytime. Okay. I'm all right throughout the night, 
until I get one of those episodes where I'm really struggling. Then I start to wheeze left, right and center. Okay, and is there a cough associated with that as well? Definitely. Okay, so cough and wheeze. Mm -hmm. But that's on occasion, but you're mainly feeling shortness of breath. 100%. Is there any other symptoms? Are you getting lightheaded? Any chest pain? I'm not lightheaded um, and I certainly don't get chest pain. Okay, and when you're having these shortness of breath episodes, what sort of helps yourself? What Do you do anything to help yourself? Or? I just try to calm myself down. Okay, and um, it takes time. It takes time and I'm running out of ways on how to do that. Okay, and how do you normally help? I just sit down. Sit down. Stop what I'm doing and just yeah. sit down. Okay, and you were saying, you know, activity does make it worse. Anything else make it worse? Not particularly. All right, okay. Did you have any sort of other symptoms? Are you coughing up any blood, anything like that? God, no. No, okay. Have you noticed any recent weight loss? No, my weight's, uh, I'm gaining weight, if anything, really. Oh, you're gaining weight, mm. okay. What about other things such as, you know, feeling lethargic, tired, that kind of thing? I've been all right. Okay. Any sort of other symptoms, swelling in your legs, in your lower back? Not that I've noticed. Okay. And do you wake up and have, um, they call it sputum, you know, mm. some people? Well, not really. It's, it's, it feels like it's largely a dry cough. Okay, dry cough. Mm. Okay. And in the last year or so, would you say, you know, has the amount you've been able to walk changed at all? I'm definitely not able to walk the same distances that I was before. Okay. You're struggling with that, yeah? Yeah. Okay. Going up a hill is tough. Okay. Have you tried anything to help yourself other than just resting? Have you tried, you know, any medications, anything like that over the... Well, I went to, you know, the pharmacist to see if there's anything that can clear my throat and he, he gave me a few things, but none of those are really helping. Like cough mixtures? That yeah. Kind of okay, fine. Have you... So we'll talk a little bit more about other things that you know, to give you me a more of a picture about your overall health. Mm. And these include, you know, your past medical history, how your lifestyle is, that kind of thing. Mm. Okay. And then we'll explain what I think is going on towards the end. Thank you. All right. Do you have any other medical conditions? Uh, no, I'm, um, I'm pretty well. Oh, okay. That's good. Any surgeries, anything like that? No. I've had my gallbladder out Gold many bladder. years ago. Okay. And was that because of... Um, Gall, you, gallstones. Gallstones, mm. okay, perfect. But since then you've not had any sort of recurrence of indigestion, pain in the abdomen, diabetes, hypertension? Nothing like that. No, okay, perfect. You, have you got any long-term respiratory conditions? Asthma, COPD, anything? Have you heard of no? No, not asthma and I'm not sure what the other one is. Okay, no COPD, okay, that's fine. Would you have any medications? I mean, you say you haven't got any diagnoses, but... Do you have any, I know you said you had antibiotics in the past and maybe the cough syrups, um, but are you taking any medication on the minute or long-term medications? Nothing like that. Okay. Do you take anything over the counter apart from the cough syrup? No. No. Okay. Nothing. Are you allergic to anything at all? Not that I know of. Okay. Do any conditions sort of, you know, running the family or anything that your parents, you know, had that you want to you tell me about? Well, my father passed away after having a stroke, but he was elderly. He was in his 80s. Okay. My mother died naturally. Okay. Um, don't know why. Okay. And tell me a little bit more about your sort of social circumstances. So that will enable me to paint more of a picture about what's exactly going on. Okay. Do you live at home by yourself or do you live with people? I live with my wife. You live with your wife? And is it a house, bungalow, or flat? Uh, it's a three-story house. Okay. Mm. Okay. And do you find you're able to go by your activities, chores, up and down the stairs? I'm finding it more difficult. You are? Mm. Particularly what? Climbing up the stairs. Okay. Because there's three sets of stairs. Okay. And I get quite short of breath. Short of breath. Do you get any chest pain at that time or no? No. No. Okay. And what about other things? So we ask about alcohol intake? No. No. Not really. And it's a very important one to find out about smoking history actually. I have to be honest, I, I do smoke. Please, yeah, please be honest. Just tell me, how much do you smoke? I smoke about 20 a day. 20 a day. And I've been doing that for the past 45 years. For as long as you can remember, yeah. Mm -hmm. 45 years. And is that cigarettes that you buy or you roll up? Roll up. Roll ups, okay. So that's quite a lot, long uh, time of smoking cigarettes, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And we know smoking cigarettes can cause some respiratory issues. But we'll get into that, okay? Okay. Just as an additional question, um, can you tell me about your occupation? Are you still working? I'm still working. Okay. Um, I work in a warehouse, um, so I operate some machinery. Okay. So, John, based on what you've told me today, um, 
and everything that we've discussed. Is there anything else that you wanted to mention? Anything else that's concerning you about your breathing problems um, before I give you what I think potentially is going on? Not really, I'm keen to know. Okay. So based on what you've told me today, the shortness of breath has been going on for many months and um, progressively getting worse. And these exacerbations, what we call. I think you have a condition called COPD. Right. Okay. This is, in its long form, is chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. This basically explains what it is. It's a chronic disease, which means it's a long-term thing. And it's basically when the, the lung tissue is damaged by toxins. In your case, I think it's the smoking that's uh, the culprit here. Right. And a lot of COPD patients, it is down to their smoking. Now, this is when this lung tissue becomes scarred and stiff and it's not able to expand fully when we take a deep breath, mm. especially when we're doing things like exercise, which is why you're feeling so short breath. Also, when you're breathing, the oxygen is not able to get into the blood supply very efficiently, like as with a patient who doesn't have COPD. To confirm this diagnosis, I would like to send you for a, uh, a breathing test called spirometry. Okay. This will be able to tell me the degree that potentially your breathing is affected, how well you're breathing, how deep you can take a breath and all these kind of things. And we're in that for the next couple of days. In the meantime, I'd like to offer you a couple of pieces of advice and perhaps some treatment as well, if that's okay. Of course. Do you feel like you're having an exacerbation of your symptoms now? You know, when you're feeling that very short of breath, producing sputum, that kind of thing. I think I'm all right at the moment. You're not having, okay, that's fine. So we'll try you in a couple of inhalers for now. Um, and the respiratory nurse that you'll see after, after this will guide you on how to use those inhalers. Mm. Um, and that should, you know, keep your symptoms at bay. Mm. The other thing, John, I want to talk to you about is smoking cessation. I thought so. Yeah. So the best thing we can do to prevent the progression of this disease is stopping smoking completely. Now that would require a full further consultation. So we'll book the next consultation available and we'll discuss that quite thoroughly, the options available and how best to help you. Thank you. So if that's covered everything today, uh, John, um, I'd just like to give you some safety netting advice which is basically if things get worse, what to do. So if you're having problems with your breathing, where the inhalers we've given you today are just not helping, um, the breathing is getting worse and worse, you're feeling quite lightheaded, your fingers perhaps turning blue, anything like that, anything very serious, you must seek immediate emergency help, okay? And that's by us calling 999 or presenting yourself at a and &E if safe to do so. If you're having any of these episodes where coughing a lot and having this green yellow sputum, then perhaps you have a chest infection. And in that case, you would phone 111 out of hours or phone your this GP practice and we'll arrange to get you some and look into what's going on and potentially get some antibiotics. So if that's all clear, John, I'd like to thank you very much. Thank you very much.